All right, it's time to open up the mailbag. Why don't the Celtics force more turnovers? Al Horford, the spiritual leader. Can Jalen Brown make the All-NBA team? And I hand out Boston Celtics awards right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Brand. It's holiday season. Drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT. No, we not on the Knicks. Flushing competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still be town's finest. Been a great team going up in the Raptors. Watch the seeds game in locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic document and domination. Matter pen of back bay. It's all seeds nation. Rain and Jay's how we started raising business. How we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. It's right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day, and I got you covered every day, Monday through Friday, plus bonus podcasts when they play on the weekends. And I'm on a 13 podcast and 14 day stretch. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Watch the show on YouTube. Get into that comment section. Let me know what you think about what I've said, about what the Boston Celtics are doing, anything Celtics related, let me know. If you're new to the show, I'm John Corrales. used to play a long time ago. Now I'm covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. And today I'm opening up the mailbag. Later on, we'll get into the Celtics awards that I'm handing out. We'll talk about Jalen's All-NBA chances, their record versus Denver, and the Celtics will start off with them forcing turnovers. Uh, It's a big kind of topic here, and it starts with... Jack, who wants to know if the, if Joe Missoula told the Celtics not to steal the ball as much as they could because they don't foul as much. No, actually, I remember coming into this season, Missoula said, we need to make forcing turnovers a priority. It was a stated goal of the Celtics this season to force turnovers because you can get out and run. You can pile up some easy points. It was an easy way to, to get into, uh, to build leads and, and, Obviously, you want to force turnovers. It's generally a part of a a pretty good defense. Now, just because you force turnovers doesn't necessarily mean like there are are teams and there are certain players who are kind of good at getting into passing lanes, but not good defenders overall. Uh, It's kind of like the Hassan Whiteside, who was good at chasing down help side blocks, but was not actually a good rim protector. So there, it can be a little bit misleading, but Joe actually wanted them to force more turnovers and they don't. What they do is they contest a lot of shots. They contest more shots than anybody in the league. They, uh, they rebound generally really well. Now they have some games where they don't, and that's something that's very noticeable. They have some halves when they don't, and that's very noticeable. It's easy to kind of gloss over when they are rebounding well, but generally speaking, they rebound, they force misses, they they do all the other stuff defensively. They defend the rim really well. They've got obviously great shot blocking guards as well as good rim protecting bigs. So it's not a it's not something that the Celtics have said, hey, we are not going to force turnovers because we we don't want to foul. It's just kind of how the nature of these guys. They've become great challengers of shots, and their second-ranked defense in the NBA is because they contest and they rebound, and that's that's a formula for success. Ben wants to know, what does Brown's increased scoring – mean for the Celtics, especially Tatum. I I think it's just a matter of when Brown has it going, it's Tatum can take a little bit of a step back. I think Tatum and Brown have both done a pretty good job this season of understanding and not getting caught up in the, oh, he's getting a, he's having a big game. Well, I need to have a big game too. And there might've been some of that in previous seasons, but there hasn't really been any of that this season. When Brown scores more, especially like he's been scoring post-All-Star break, then J- uh, Jason can just kind of be somewhat of a decoy, can be more of a facilitator. And I think it goes hand in hand. Like If a team says, well, we're going to dare somebody else to score and the ball finds itself in, in Jalen's hands, then that's one of the byproducts of, do you blitz Jason Tatum? Uh, I think 
Jalen has just found seams and defenses. And a lot of this is just organic. It's not one guy trying to force his offense. When the Celtics are at their best, no one is forcing anything. And that's where Jalen has really stepped up and Jason has really stepped up. They are not forcing their offense. They are taking the opportunities that are there. I think maturity has shown them that it's okay to have what feels like long stretches of not scoring or maybe not even feeling like you're touching the ball much because the game is long. I think the maturity is allowing them to accept how long a 48 minute game is and say, Hey, this stretch in the second quarter, maybe I'm not touching it as much. Maybe I'm not getting as many opportunities, but I'm doing other things. I'm setting picks. I'm making passes or I'm, I'm doing other whatever, I'm a decoy, I'm, I'm, my gravity is holding the corner so someone else can drive. And eventually when someone else drives, things will open up because Derek White, Drew Holiday, uh, whoever, they can only get to the rim so many times before the defense collapses and you get your opportunities. So there are pockets of opportunity throughout the game for everybody. And they're doing a really good job of understanding I might not be touching the ball now, but there's a pocket of opportunity coming. And because, as I always say, if you play the right way, the right guys get the right stats, those guys are going to get their right stats more often than not. And they're going to show up as the two best players on just about every night. And they're going to be the two biggest scorers on every night. So I don't think it means much other than they're playing the right way. Owen asks, do you think losses are fine the way the Celtics season is going? Do you think the Thunder might make a break for first in the West and challenge us in the finals? This is three questions in one sentence there. Do I think the losses are fine? I don't care about losses at this point other than you don't want to see a string of them. But losses, as long as the Celtics are playing well, and I mean playing with the right mentality, playing the right way. If they just get outplayed, not a big deal. The loss in Denver stands out. You got, you got outplayed. Denver's a great team. I don't mind that it happens. So the losses right now, they're fine. Now, if the Celtics start playing selfish basketball, if they stop defending, if they start playing way too much ISO, if they stop working the ball and generating good threes and just start settling for the first three that they can get, that would be a bad formula. But if they keep playing the way they're playing and it just results in a couple of losses here and there, not a big deal. Uh, can the Thunder make a break for first and challenge in the West? They will have to make a hell of a break for the, the Celtics to give up that first overall seed. Uh, the magic number there is nine. So the, the, Thunder have to be significantly better than Boston over the, the final 14 games. And that's just going to be tough. The West is difficult. Uh, Boston has a very easy strength of schedule moving forward. And if the Celtics really want to lock up that top overall seed, they will. And it, it's, it's all completely in their hands. All they have to do is win nine more games, go nine and five the rest of the way. And they will be, Totally fine. Uh, so, no, losses are fine. And, oh, and will the Thunder uh, challenge the Celtics in the finals? I do not trust the Thunder to get to the finals. I still think it's going to be Denver uh, because the Thunder are a young team. So, I don't trust them to get to the finals. So, my my strong, strong bet would be no. Uh, Aaron. Is Al Horford the mental pillar of this team right now after losing Marcus? Feels like the roster respects him a lot. Guys seem to be fighting just to get a championship just for Al. Is this true? I've seen, I, I'm already seeing, sad to see Al retire in the coming years. Yeah, I would be too. But Al is playing great. Al is playing young. He, he is having a great time. His son has been around him all year long. His son is taking up. Like his son was handing out, uh, he was doing like ball boy duties. 
handing out like towels and, and sweats to guys coming out of the game against the Pistons. So he was like working on the sideline. So um, he's involving his son a lot. And I think that's energizing him a little bit too. He's having a great time. He's playing a great role. The Celtics are using him great. So he still has a few years left. So that's going to be fun. But as a mental pillar of this team, he is a rudder for sure. That's the best way to call it. Pillar, okay, yes, also. But I like the term rudder because he does just the, – the boat is moving. He's not powering the boat. But he's just kind of like, oh, we're, te we're teetering this way a little bit. Let me just shift this way and help guide this team in the right direction. Right. It's a lot of other things are at play moving this boat forward, but he's definitely the one of the rudders or, or the rudder kind of because the guys love him. They respect him. He is the he has everybody's attention at all times if he wants to use it. So, yeah, he is. He is. You want to call him a mental pillar of this team? Absolutely. Uh, up next, what happens if the Celtics don't win a championship this year? Some Nuggets talk. And we'll get into uh, the awards later on. All that is coming right up. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it, level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. You know Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 streaming channel on YouTube. It's Locked On Sports Today on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern. The best MLB season preview comes to you straight there on Lockdown Sports today, March 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern. Be the first to get local insight from the MLB local experts on the Lockdown Podcast Network. March 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Get it on the Lockdown Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel uh, on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Let's get back into the questions here as we dip into the mailbag. JohnCorrales.com slash mailbag, by the way. JohnCorrales.com slash mailbag. That is the only way I get questions. It's the only way I can keep them organized. It's the only way I can keep them sorted. I apologize for people who want to send them in other ways. JohnCorrales.com slash mailbag is the only way. I am accepting questions for the mailbag. So that's how you submit them. All right, let's get back into it with Finn. If the Celtics were not to win the championship this year, how do you think it would affect this season? Do you think they would make any big moves? Well, first of all, the answer depends on how they don't win the championship. That's a huge reason. So if the Celtics don't win a championship because Let's say they get to the finals, they play Denver, Denver just beats them. Jokic is awesome, and they the Celtics play great, and Denver wins a classic in seven games. Then the Celtics do nothing. The Celtics keep that together, and they say, hey, you know what? We were right there. We've got, there's obviously their second apron and all this other stuff involved, and they, I think they just run it back, and they say, we have it. It's there. We just ran up against the best in the business. If they lose because old habits show up, they turn the ball over a ton, any particular player has a really horrible series, and it becomes clear that the playoffs are not built for a guy, a group, a particular pairing, whatever it is, then they make big moves to address that. 
because they have to. I feel like if they don't win a championship, the first scenario is more likely than the second because they just seem focused. They seem together. So I, I would say it just depends on how, and this gets me into Jared's question who says, I like the fact that the Celtics are 0-2 against the Nuggets bulletin board material. Hey, you know what? Anything that fuels you in the finals, if it is Boston, Denver, which would be the smart pick I get. Like if, if you just put, you know, say, you know, do or die, here's your pick. What's your pick for the finals? Boston, Denver would seem like a very popular and smart pick. If the Celtics face the Nuggets and it's constantly, oh, you didn't beat the Nuggets this year. You didn't beat the Nuggets this year. They came into your house and beat you. You went to them and and Yoke, you couldn't stop Jokic. He was just MVP. He's a god. You know, you know, all of that stuff, all of that narrative. That will fuel, that will fuel the Celtics. Got to be careful, as always, not to let that change your mentality. It's one thing to take something like this as motivation. It's another to let it alter your approach and say, oh, I'm going to show them. Watch me do this by myself. Can't do that, right? You still have to play within the team dynamic. Boston is at their best when they move the ball, when they share it, when they cut and and are you know, high assists, driving kicks, uh, hitting those three-pointers, generating good threes, hitting them at a good rate, getting to the rim, getting to the line, all of that stuff. I mean, that's generally how teams win. But that's the Celtics. ISO, just hunting matchups, that's not going to be the way they win. So the bulletin board material, yeah, I'm all for it. Pile it up. As long as it's processed and uh, executed properly and not processed and executed in an egotistical way. And I think that's just something that Joe Mazzulla has been very good at doing. Why I think Joe Mazzulla is a really good coach, it's the mental stuff. It's it's that mentality. And I think that's where he has uh, this team and where, where they do very, very well. Bino says... I know you said you don't care about Celtics, uh, who the Celtics face in the first round, but can I push a little honesty from you to at least admit that it would be ideal for the Knicks to rise to the third seed, Cavs to the four, so we can sit back, grab some popcorn, and watch the Bucks and Knicks beat the crap out of each other in the second round. Okay, you know what, Bino? Yes, push that honesty out of me. I think that's a great scenario. So. And it's not, I don't care. I really, honestly, I do not care who the Celtics face in the first round. Give me anybody. I think the Celtics are that much better than everybody in the East, even Milwaukee. And and I'm doing this show before they face Milwaukee, and I don't care what the result is. The Celtics can win uh, by a bunch, and I, th- that would be fun. I'd still be skeptical uh, a little bit, but I, I just don't care. If the Celtics lose, I don't care. The Celtics at their best are better than Milwaukee this year. But all that said, the seeding going a certain way so other teams can meet up, that's a great way to think about it. And I've, I've been thinking about it such, in such a Celtic-centered way that I haven't really cared much about this other stuff. So I'm going to give you this, Bino. I think watching the Knicks and the Bucks go at it, if they can get to the second round against each other and just – knock the snot out of each other and have it be a seven game slug fest while the Celtics feast and sit and wait after a five or six game win and just sit there and eat their popcorn and go, Oh wow. I can't believe Giannis just got hit in the face like that. Wow. I can't believe Julius Randle just got elbowed in the balls. I can't believe any of this stuff, but Hey, let's just watch these guys beat the hell out of each other and enjoy it. Uh, that would be a, a fun series to watch. Uh, I, I am with you in not caring, uh, calves, mm, not, not a big deal. Magic would be tough, but I don't think it's going to get to that. Um, Indy same and, and Tyrese Halliburton hasn't been the same since coming back from his injury. So, uh, I, I feel like if, 
if anything that can help the Celtics in terms of the competition, just going at each other, big thumbs up. So I like the way you're thinking. Coming up next, awards. I hand out all the Celtics awards. I get into Jalen Brown's All-NBA chances, Joe Mazzulla's Coach of the Year, Derek White, Defensive Player of the Year. That's all next. Today's show is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. Like the 2024 Nissan Rogue. It's perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built in is your always Updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Forget connecting your phone with that cord that always gets caught up in everything. Google Assistant, Google Maps, Google Play Store. It's all built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Let's go to the other end. The 2024 Nissan Armada will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to eight in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On NBA when you're done with this show because I'm back. I'm back on Locked On NBA. I'm so excited to be hosting the show with Jake Madison tonight. We've got rotating hosts all week covering the NBA, the league as a whole. So it's a fun show. Check it out. Add it to your rotation after Locked On Celtics. And check me out with Jake Madison on the Wednesday Locked On NBA broadcast. Let's get back to the mailbag, wrapping it up here. Again, johncorrales.com slash mailbag. Ellie says it should be law that the Celtics play at home on St. Patrick's Day. What are NBA schedule makers thinking? I can appreciate that. I really can. Uh, unfortunately, because the Celtics share their building with the Bruins and there are other venues going on, uh, other events going on at the venue, and it's just hard to make a schedule where each team has w this one guaranteed home date every year, especially when they don't own the building. Uh, it's, it's just not possible. So if someday the Celtics own their own building and they can petition for that and they can uh, try to be home, maybe not all the time, but more, then maybe. But it just makes sense for a team called the Celtics wearing green and white and having a shamrock and all that stuff to be home, uh, that that would be, I think, I'm with you. I'm with you in theory, in practice, just not exactly possible to pull off. So, sorry. Now it's awards time. Celtics have 14 games left. I feel really good about handing out the awards now. We don't have to wait. We don't have to see, well, hey, if or that, no. Everything is solid. So let's run down all of this stuff. Andrew says, is there any chance that, that Jalen Brown makes an all-NBA team this season? And longer term, what would he have to do to get his number in the rafters? Ooh. Well, yes, Jalen Brown, I think, will make an all-NBA team this season. Not only is he playing very well, not only is he playing his best now post-All-Star when voters are starting to really – think and put pen to paper and start to make their lists and start to whittle things down, they're going to say, here's my group. And it's positionless this year. So it makes things a little bit difficult, but they're going to say, here's my group. It's 15 players. Here's my 30 of potential all NBA players. And you start to whittle it down. There's going to be, first of all, front of mind, Jalen's going to be up higher on the list because he's just playing great right now. Secondly, people are going to say the Celtics are the best team by far in the NBA. That means you got to have at least two, right? You got to have at least a couple of guys. So he's going to benefit from that. So I believe Jalen makes at least third team all NBA. 
he might make second team all NBA. What does he have to do to get into the rafters? Win a couple of championships, not just one, but like two at least. Um, and if he can get into the hall of fame while he's at it now, I don't know if he's going to have a hall of fame career, uh, but he's, he's getting there like a couple, he's, he's going to be a pretty regular mainstay as an all-star. So I feel like pile up a few more all-star appearances, pile up, you know, a few more all NBA, you know, this year, let's say he gets this year. That's two. Can you get two more? You get to four all NBA, you get to a few more all-star, you get a couple of championships that gets you into the hall of fame that gets you into the rafters, uh, for sure. So it's lofty goals and it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but that's what he's going to have to do. And it's there, it's there for him. So we'll see. Will wants to know what about Joe Missoula for coach of the year? I think that's an absolute, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But at the same time, you've got some teams like Minnesota, uh, OKC, those teams that have had um, just exceptional years, surprising years. So Dagnall, uh, Finch, they're going to have their, they're, they're probably going to be ahead of him. Boston was always going to be good. I think, I think if you look at it and you say, wow, you know, they've, they've done a lot of things that, uh, I think highlight Joe Missoula's mentality, his approach. That's, uh, something that uh, I think should push him to the front of the line. Best team. Um, after everything that happened last year, I think he deserves a lot of consideration. I think what's going to happen is Finch or Dagnall is going to win it. Celtics will win a championship. And then next year, they'll be a year behind. They'll be like, the Celtics will be good next year again. And Missoula will win it next year. So that's going to be my guess there. Do you think Derek White, this is from Allaire. Do you think Derek White deserves defensive player of the year or for, and or first team all defense? It's going to be tough for defensive player of the year. There are definitely other candidates and that generally goes to a big and it's probably going to be like Rudy Gobert or somebody because Minnesota has a great defense and, and they're surprising and he's got great defensive numbers. Uh, but I think Derek White should be first team all defense. Like You can't tell me he's not one of the best defensive players in the league. He absolutely will be an all defensive player. And I think first team is, is there for sure. Which brings me to Owen, who says, <laughs> I guess he's asked a lot. I, I didn't realize this. Day eight of asking for awards for the Celtics, and he lists them all. So I'm going to use his list. Here's Owen's list and my answers. My definitive list of Boston Celtics awards. I'll start from the bottom and work my way up. Clutch player of the year. I'm giving this to Peyton Pritchard. Pritchard. Uh, just because he's hit already like two or three half court heaves, like that's, that's amazing. And <laughs> Tatum hasn't hit a ton of <laughs> clutch shots. Um, sorry. Well, I mean, game winners or anything like that. Um, there are other options or other players, but I'm giving this to Pritchard. I want to give Pritchard something and his willingness to take the heave that go for it. Yes. That's, that is my completely unscientific, but I'm giving it to him. Clutch player of the year. This Celtics season dunk champion is clearly Jalen Brown. He's dunking on everybody. That's a no-brainer. Uh, the three-point champion this year. I'm going to go with Drew Holiday. And that's because I got another award for Sam Hauser coming up, and I want to spread this out. But Holiday is the best corner three-point shooter in the league. So I'm giving him the three-point championship this year. And look, he's just shooting better from three overall. So I think he deserves the recognition of being a, a one of Boston's knockdown three point shooters. I mean, look at what he's done over the course of his career. He, he has shot well, but never this well, he's shooting 44 and a half percent from three. 
it's only the second time he shot better than 40%. And that was a couple of seasons ago. I, I just feel like that's, that's a, an absolute to me. Yeah. He's, he's your three point champion. In fact, I didn't even sort this out. So holiday actually has a little bit better three point percentage than Sam Hauser, 44 and a half percent to 43.2%. So you know what? I, I don't even need to apologize to Sam Hauser because that's a legitimate choice. All right. Uh, this is rookie of the year slash new player of the year, which Owen, thank you for doing the slash new player of the year. Cause there is no real rookie of the year, but it's Christoph's Porzingis. Who's the matchup problem who comes in and is the, uh, the guy, he is going to be the reason why the Celtics win a championship just because of how much he bends opposing defenses, right? Obviously there's Tatum, obviously there's Brown and, and so many other reasons, but Porzingis, Punishing mismatches is going to be a huge element as to why the Celtics are able to win a championship. Most improved player is Sam Hauser. This is his award because not only has Sam Hauser come in and been the you know sharpshooter off the bench, his defense has been really good. He has been challenged over and over again, and he has stepped up. He has rebounded well. He has cut to the basket and caught, caught lobs. He's dunking. Uh, like crazy. He's he's doing a lot of different things. He's shooting well, but he's also shooting on the move. He's shooting a little bit more quickly. He has improved incredibly. So he gets most improved player. Defensive player of the year, I'm giving this to Derek White because the Celtics defensive player of the year with the block shots that he has, with the steals, he is just uh, between him and, and Drew Holiday, the best defensive backcourt in the NBA. Hands down, they are the two best defensive guards in the league. So I'm giving White my defensive player of the year. He has been amazing. Shout out to Jalen Brown, who has a stake in getting that. Shout out to Porzingis, who has a little bit of a stake in getting that. Obviously, I mentioned Holiday. He has a big stake in getting that. Jason Tatum deserves that. But I'm giving Jason Tatum the Celtics MVP because not only is he the best player, but he has done a lot things that don't go uh, noticed on a and uh, every night. He is still obviously scoring, uh, still uh, getting to the line. But he defends, he rebounds. He's Boston's leading rebounder. He blocks shots, he gets steals, he does a little bit of everything. He is very clearly the MVP of this team. So those are my awards. What do you think the awards should be? Get into the comment section on the YouTube page. Let me know who you should, who who I should have picked if it's somebody different or whatever. Disagree, agree. Let me know in the comment section. Um, now I'm going to do a little something new. I'm going to share. I do the the open to the show with my intro music. That's just a short version of my intro music. So I'm going to play the whole song, the original song. So. I'm going to start doing that at the end of these podcasts. So you can get the whole taste. You can click off now if you don't like the show, the, the song. But if you like the intro, I'm going to start playing the whole thing here at the end of shows. So I would love it right now if you share the podcast, spread the word, tell your friends that they should be listening to and watching the Locked On Celtics podcast. It's right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. B. Thanks for blockbuster bread. It's holiday season. Drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT. No, we not on the Knicks. Flush a competition like Hal on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still be town's finest. Been a race team going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds game in locked on NASA. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic document and domination. Matter pen of back there. It's all seeds nation. Bill Russell the bird. Hondo to Rondo. KG in the Truth, all the legends in the room. Two Tommy points for Reggie and DJ. I see the killer with the big heart was the hardest. Rain and Jake, how we started raising Bennett, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. Peace.